Hey guys, I'm going to be showing you how to do the installation of one of our Frigidaire 8000 BTU window AC units. Alright, so we're going to start by removing our, our straps. We're going to use a razor knife. We're going to cut away from the, the box and ourselves. Get all those removed. And we're going to pull out our instructions. Now I'm going to go over these real quick to make certain there haven't been any edits or changes to it in the procedure. Um, that way that we, I can show you correctly how to do this installation. All right, now that we've got the straps cut, we can go ahead and lift the top of this box off. And set it off to the side. All right, so the first thing we always want to do, number one, let's verify that our window does open. Our window does need to be able to open to be able to install the AC unit inside of it. We also want to check our measurements and verify that we have enough clearance here. I've got 28 and a half by 22 and a half is what I'm actually showing. So I should be good to go ahead and install this window AC unit. I'm also going to slide the screen up. If your window has a screen, it may need to be removed. In this case, I can just slide ours up. All right, so let's go ahead and unpack some of our items so we can see exactly what it is that we have. Of course, we have our air conditioning unit. But we also have a goodie bag here, and inside of our goodie bag, we have whoop, two of our accordion side dividers. We have some adhesive foam strips. We have a remote control. And we have some screws and looks like some mounting hardware. And I dropped my foam adhesive, but we also have it's like a thick piece of black foam and a thinner layer of black foam with a adhesive backing. we're going to be using all of these to help insulate the unit inside of the window. Alright, so now we got to remove the unit from the styrofoam and cardboard base. Um, I have found the safest way to do this is using two people. Team lift, so we're going to go ahead and do that real quick. Now before you dispose of your base panel, there is a bracket in here and we're going to undo our power cord. Now we can remove our uh, styrofoam and cardboard base and dispose of it. Alright, so now I'm going to install my um, bracket across the top of the unit. I'm going to go ahead and spin it around just so you guys can see where, the, where I'm going to be putting the screws in. Alright, so we're going to unpack the bracket. It's inside of this blue material. The screws to secure the bracket are right here inside of it. And it has a foam piece that goes underneath it. And then we're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver to put these four screws in. Now the holes are already here on the unit, so we're just having to line the, the hole in the bracket up with the hole that's already on the top of the unit. All 
before you tighten this thing all the way down, your first screw, make certain that you've got your other holes aligned. But you want these screws as snug as you can get them. That way we don't create a vibration issue on top of this unit. That's why they put that foam strip under there to try to help with any type of vibration. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to install the side fillers. Uh, this is the left-hand side one. If you're standing in front of the unit, this is the one that's gonna be on the left-hand side. They are labeled. Each one is different. Now what I do is we're gonna, we're gonna actually pull the accordion material out so that we're not fighting with the ends and we're just gonna slide it straight down onto these three little brackets, these little mounting clips. And then we're going to stretch it out and we're actually going to slide our top into the top rail and our bottom has a location down here on the bottom. It's built into the, uh, into the appliance and let's go ahead and close them up for the moment. And we'll do the other side. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and install the right hand side one. There we go. All right, so I don't want you guys to forget about this piece of shipping material right here. It was hidden from me earlier, but we also need to remove this off the side. All right, so this is one step that can get tricky if you try to do it while the unit's installed. I always do this prior to installing the unit. Um, still a little bit tricky, but a little bit more safe. What, what I need to do is I need to put my insulation here across the top um, that's going to seal between where my window comes down on my unit. That's what you actually use the foam, the black foam with the adhesive backing, we're going to use that. So what we're going to do is I already verified earlier my window is 28 and 3 quarters. So we're going to go 28 and 3 quarters from outside to outside. You can expand this out if you need to, but I've already pulled mine out a little bit. I have it pretty darn close. And try to keep the reveal on both sides about the same so that the unit's actually going to be centered inside of that window. Twenty-eight and three quarters. And then we're going to take our foam piece and we're going to measure it out twenty-eight and three quarters. about there and we're actually going to cut it you can dispose of this we're going to pull our backing off and you're just going to work this it's actually going to go on the back surface of this front lip
and then lay down in like this. Measure it one more time just to make sure I'm still pretty close. I am. And I'm going to trim the excess off. All right. Next, we're going to be setting it in the window. All right, so we're ready to go ahead and slide this thing up in the window. Now, with any, um, this is a vinyl window, it's a little bit different for a wood installation, a wood window. Make sure you review the installation instructions if you have a wood window because it may it is going to vary a little bit with the installation type. But with a vinyl, what you're going to do is you're going to bring your, your bracket right behind this front lip. That's actually what's going to hold us in place. And then our dividers are going to actually extend to both sides. And then your top, where we just put that foam seal across the top, we're going to lock it in by dropping the window down on the unit and it's going to hit the back of that bracket and keep it from tilting back. But I'm going to show you, just so you'll see, I wanted to explain it a little. There we go. Now, try not to, to mess with the, the window or the unit too, too much until you get your screws put in. I'm gonna show you how to pre-drill your holes and put your screws in now to secure it in its place. All right, so one thing I wanna point out before I install these two little clips that go down here on the filler panel, this is actually the one that is for the vinyl windows. There's also one in the kit for wood windows. They're actually a little bit different, um, but with the vinyl one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold our filler panel and we're gonna clip it onto the, the plastic and leave it sitting right there. It just holds that filler panel in place right there. And now we can actually pre-drill a hole there and run one of our securing screws in to hold that so it doesn't move on us. We're going to do the same with our other clip on the left hand side. Now on the left hand side it's the same process. We're going to hold the filler panel and we're going to put our clip on there and that's going to hold it tight so we can actually run our drill pre-drill a hole for our screw right here. Now we're going to take five of these Phillips head screws that we had in our hardware and we're just going to run our screws in. This is going to secure the unit into the window. You want to ensure that it's secured for two reasons. One, um, so we don't have to worry about it falling into the window. 
on the consumer while the consumer's trying to use it or if they have small children, you know, it's safely installed. And two, from the outside, if we have a passerby that thinks that this house looks kind of neat and they may have something inside of it that they want, it's going to secure it in the window so that they cannot get into the home through that window. Now we're also going to put a lock on our window. There is one other bracket that comes in the hardware bag that we'll get to right after I secure these. But these are a crucial step in ensuring Drill that hole again. There we go. Now we got it secured inside of our window so it's not going to come out. All right, so the other bracket that I was talking about, it's a little angled bracket. What this does is it actually is going to screw into our frame up here. It's going to lock the window so that it cannot be lifted back up. If somebody outside the home does try to be malicious and come into the home, it's going to prevent them from being able to slide the window back up. So we're going to set our angle bracket in place. We're going to drill out the one hole on our angle bracket. And then we're going to run a screw in there. And this is going to secure that window and prevent it from being able to be opened. It's just a little added protection. All right, so next we're going to use this, this piece of um, black foam. This is actually going to insulate in between the space in between our, our top and our bottom window panes. We're actually going to measure it out. We're going from the entire gap and we are going to cut it. and then we're just going to tuck it. We're going to tuck it into that little gap in between the two. Now you can use a, a flat blade or a flat edge if you need to, to, to push this down in there. Ultimately, we want to try to make it look nice for the consumer, um, but more importantly, I want it to do its job. It's, it's here to prevent air leaks, warm air migration, um, cold air from migrating out. I would just keep tucking it in there until either you're satisfied or the consumer's satisfied because it's a pretty thick piece of foam. It's going to take up the space and help prevent any type of air leaks through there. Alrighty. Alright, so the unit also comes with these five little foam strips. Now what we're going to use these for is to fill in any gapping around the unit. Now, on my unit, I actually wear my um, filler panels come into contact with the side of the windows. There's a little bit of a gap there, so I'm going to run a piece down that. And there's a little bit of a gap down here on the base. Uh, I'm going to put one down there as well. Now, there is no specific rhyme or reason between um, the length on these. 
So you just kind of use what you need as you go. They provide them for you just as a, uh, just for this purpose. But what they're doing is, is they're making up for all the different installation types that there can be. And in my installation, I obviously, I'm gonna need some type of a filler here on the side. Looks good. Let's do the piece across the bottom. Good deal. Now we've got it completely secured, locked in. Let's go ahead and remove all of our tape and protective materials. We can hang on to this. I always like to give this to the consumer in case it's something they want to keep. Even if they don't keep it, they can at least look at it and make the decision to throw it away. Let's check that our filter is installed. Yep, our filter's in place. Last thing we gotta do is plug it in and test it. All right, so now we've come to the end. Let's go ahead and remove the plastic off of my power cord. Plugging it in, power it on, set for eco. I'm gonna put it on cool. Temps drop to 72 degrees. All right, so we're gonna let the unit run for a little bit until it actually kicks on the compressor. A lot of these have a delay uh, to protect that compressor. Um, but while I'm waiting for this thing to kick on and test it for the consumer, I'm gonna go ahead and take the owner's information. I'm gonna pass that along to them, um, give them the remote control for it. If they are not home during the time of installation, I always put it in the drawer to the left of where the range is. Now that we have the unit installed, I'm gonna go ahead and put a level on it just to verify that it does have a proper downwards tilt. Now, this tilt is important for if there is an excessive amount of humidity or moisture that accumulates inside of the unit, it's gonna allow that moisture to actually come to the back. Now, if the unit's installed properly through normal operation, you're not going to have that steadily dripping unit like we, we used to have because they're actually using water on these more modern units to help cool off the condensing coil. So I'm just, that's a precautionary thing in case we do end up with an excessive amount of moisture inside of it. They always still need that slight downwards tilt. If you guys have any other questions or comments, feel free to check us out at electroluxservicetips.com. Thank you.